All right, well, it's a rainy day here in Tennessee, so what better day than to uh, spend some time finalizing my jets on the cafe bill. So right now what I have is the stock setup in here. So there are 122 on the mains and 41s on the idle circuit. So when I fire it up, it's all tuned up for the most part other than the jetting. So when I fire it up, you'll hear it idle good. But then when I throttle it up, you'll hear this flat where it just won't come up. flat where right when it comes off the idle circuit it's just not getting enough fuel and uh, then when you throttle it on up it'll pick up a little but it, the motor's just not tuned right so we got to work out these jetting so the things that we've changed on the bike is you know I put this little guy on there so it's a really open air filter and it gets a lot of air in it so that changed it and then also the exhaust on this one has about half of the baffle, so it doesn't have much baffle at all. And so what it's doing there is not giving any back pressure for the exhaust. So if I want to figure out how much is related to the exhaust and how much is related to what I did to the air intake, I can put the stock air intake back on this one and then it should run like normal. If it doesn't run like normal, then everything that's making it run not normal would be attributed to the open exhaust. So we're gonna switch that out, fire the bike back up, and just kinda of see what it sounds like, whether or not it'll rev up, and then that'll tell us whether or not the air is the problem, or whether or not we gotta compensate for the exhaust a little bit. So let's get this took out, and we'll put our uh, stock one back on there. All right, so here's our stock air box, and because I got my key and stuff down here, I had to take that corner off a little bit, but I got it all sealed back up just like it was before, so now we can put all this together. There we go. So what that's going to do is simulate the original air box because this is the breather and it's very restrictive. So now when we fire it up, if it'll throttle up and come up, then we know the majority of the rejetting is going to be needed for the more open air box that I got and the rest of it's going to be the exhaust. So let's fire it up. So, you could hear it was quite a bit better, but it still got that flat. It just didn't last as long. And so I still got a pop when I let off on it, so I'm still off on my balance. And what that means is that with the stock air system on here, everything's set stock on the carburetors. The rest of that is those exhausts. So we'll get set up over here and figure out what size jetting we're gonna do. All right, so here is the main jet, it's a 122. And I need to go up on these just a little bit. I'm thinking maybe I'll start with a 124. So I could just buy some and uh, that'd be so easy and just get them and try them. But what's the fun in that? So I figure we'll set up and we'll make us a couple. And so let me put my jet over here to the side. But when you go to buy drill bits, you're not gonna find drill bits that are the sizes that you need so precisely. And so these, I got them over at the El Chico store. This is a 16th inch bit. And so if you measure one of these guys, it measures out at, I'm gonna switch over to metric. It measures out at 158. And so what we need to do is get that size on the end down there to a 1.24 or a 124. Because right now, if you measured the other one, if you had a way to get inside, it would read 1.22. So, one of the easiest ways to get a drill bit to adjust in its size precisely is to set it up in a drill press. 
So what I got set up here is some of this sticky back uh, 320 grit sandpaper and all I did was just take a piece of uh, aluminum square stop and then uh, stick it to it and to prevent it from moving because they're real flexible just set a magnet back behind it gives it a backstop. So all I'm going to do is set that up against that magnet and then I just got something to raise it up a little bit and so going to go across here and we're going to sand that end of that down until we get to the right diameter. All right, so we sanded for a minute, so let's see if we've made any progress. All right, so just after a few minutes of sanding, we can see up here we're 158 up on the hub where it was originally. Down here on the tip now, we are, we're at 151. We just need to keep sanding and get that on down a little bit further. All right, so after, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, uh, rubbing it back and forth there and measuring it along the way to make sure I don't go too far and also raising it up and down as needed to kind of make sure the surface stays consistent and you got to measure on the highest spot of it if you measure down in a groove it's 120 if you measure rotate it around and measure it up then it measures the right size so there's a 124 you'll know that you're really close because the end of it is just like feels like it wants to go in there but it can't that's about the difference you're going to make on that jet so it'll stick in there but now you got to drill it all the way through all right and we know we've only done this part of it so we can't go very deep fortunately that jet's not very deep anyway so all we got to do is find something to put this in and then we can drill the holes in them all right so a little jet is a pretty common thread and turns out it's the same thread as the uh, old case here so I'm just going to set this little guy down into one of those and thread him into the old air filter case and now all we got to do is take our little drill bit run it right down in there and we will reject that jet and we got to remember we only have it machined down to about right there so you can't go any deeper than that or else you'll drill the whole thing out so everything's pretty stable we're just going to take that drill bit and there we go so now we're drilled out to a 24 just barely fit down in there so there we go. Now we just got to do the other jet and we'll be ready. All right. So there we go. So we got our two jets. Now all we need to do is put them in the carburetor. All right. It is time to pull the carbs off. And let's rejet this little problem. All All right, so we got our jets changed out. So let's stick our carbon back on there. All right, so we got our bigger jets in and uh, we'll see if it'll throttle up now. Maybe I'll have a little more up on the top end. Still might have a little trouble transitioning because I may have to raise the needle up, shim it up a little bit to get me some fuel, but hopefully it'll fire up and then I can throttle up a little bit better. So let's give it a shot.
a whole lot better up top. Now I'm throttling up, <clears throat> but you can still hear it pop, pop when I close the throttle back. So it's leaning out right as the transition between idle and run, which means I probably need to pull that needle up, the diaphragm needle, pull it up just a little bit so I'll have just a little more fuel right as it lifts off. But that's a whole lot better there. So next stop, we'll pull the carburetors back off. I'll shim that needle up just a little bit and I should be getting me some fuel right at the beginning of the transition there. All right, so we are back on the workbench and we're going to figure out just how much to raise this needle. So we could just guess at it and just throw some random little washers underneath there. I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute. Or we could use some math to kind of help us out. So if we went from a 122 main and we went to a 124 Let's calculate the area difference that uh, that made on how much fuel can go through it. So we whoop out our calculator and we got 1.22 millimeter. So divide that by two, it gives us a radius. So then square that, so times the same and then times pi. And you end up with, for the original, you have a area of 1.169. Okay, so let's do the same for the 120. And you end up with a 1.208. All right, so that's the difference in our area. So if we want to see percentage-wise what that did for the area, we just subtract the two and figure out what the percentage is. So we take... 1.208 minus 1.169 and that gives us 039 is our area increase. Divide that by the original 1.169 and you end up with a 3.3% increase. So we have a 3.3% increase in our fuel that will float. So what does that tell us? Well, when it comes to raising up the needle, we want the needle to allow that extra fuel to go through there. And right now, this taper, you know, it was done by Yamaha, and they probably spent months trying to figure out how to get that taper right so that it would allow the fuel to transition up. So we don't have a lot of choices on trying to redesign that because that's well beyond what we can do but we can raise it up. And what raising it up does is allow more fuel to flow. And then the whole thing lifts up and it's gonna allow that extra fuel to flow. So if we have a 3.3% increase in the amount of fuel that can go into it, we need to get the needle out of the way to allow that fuel to flow. In order to do that, we gotta get a wrench. So all we gotta do is just take the cap off the inside and we dump the needle out and put it that way now it won't hurt okay so that thing just sits down in there so we can get some little washers and uh, I don't know what size it is but it just fits over the top of that and it has to be smaller than that so we just put that on there put it back down in there and that effectively shims the needle up so what do we need to shim up how much do we need to go on that right there because there's lots of washers and you can sand them down and get them kind of sized right. You got the little thin ones, usually the stainless ones are the thinnest I've found. And then you got some regular steel ones that are the same size. They're a little bit thicker. And then you even have, if you were really going crazy, like you put individual air uh, pickups on the carburetors, you might have to jet up really high and there's some uh, even thicker ones that are made out of aluminum. And so this is a little stainless one. And if you measure it, it measures 0 0.03. And metric, that is about 0.8 millimeter. So how are we going to figure this out? Well, here's what we're going to do. So I got the carburetor over here. This is my play carburetor. Fully functional carburetor. I just use it to kind of play around with. 
And so what I did inside of here, I left a jet, but this is a really big jet. And so the jet's not gonna restrict. What I wanna do is calculate the restriction of that needle in order to calibrate the needle. So all I did was hook it up to where we got a pipe coming in. And what I'm gonna do is put fuel in there. I'm gonna time how long it takes for that fuel to go down this pipe between that dot and that dot. And I'm gonna calculate its flow. I don't care what the number is, I don't care calculated flow rate, whatever. All I want to know is how long it takes because all I want to do is match the uh, difference, the percentage. So if it goes from here to here 3% faster, then I'm spot on. If it goes from here to here not as fast, then I'm still restricted. If it goes there really, really fast, then I know I'm too far open. So what we'll do is get set up and I'm going to put this back together. And we're going to figure out how long it takes for the fuel to get from there to there with the stock setup. So now what I want to do is time with it all the way in how much fuel goes through that needle. And so I got to fill it up, but because I took it out, I'm going to have to purge it. Um, you'll, you might hear it on the camera. If it goes bubble, 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 bubble over here, it means I'm getting the air out. Until that thing's silent, I got to get the air out of it. So let's fill her up. and do a purge or two. And so all I want to do is just make sure it's not making any noise over here. So let me tip it up. There we go. So we got tipped up. So now maybe it won't make any noise. And I can check my flow rate. All right, let's get her phone back out. And what we want to do, I got it a little bit high right now, so while I'm getting set up here, let me go over here and set my timer. Okay, so I'm going to ease it down to where you may not be able to see it on the camera, but I'm going to ease it right down to there, and then I'm going to time until it gets to there. So first, I got to get it to the point. All right, so we're right at the dot. So here we go. Let's get us a time. Bye. Boop. All right, so it took right at six seconds to flow from there to there. And that's with a big jet, so the jet's not in play right now. This is just the needle. So let's write that down, 6.02. All right, so at the stock setting, we're 6.02 seconds to flow that amount of fuel. All right, so let's pull this thing out. And we're going to put our shim in there. So this is the 0.8 millimeter shim, my first shim to try. And so I'm just going to put the shim on the needle and put it all back in there. All right, so let's put it back in there and get us a time with a 0.8 millimeter shim in it. Ooh, hit right on the mark. All right, so we're ready to retime from there to there. And let's see, just by moving out 0.8 or 30 thousandths or so, then uh, let's see what it did for our time. So we'll fire it up again here, get my finger on it, and... <clears throat> so now it's at 5.39, 5.4. So it went quite a bit faster just by that one little shim, and we ended up at 5.4, plus or minus a little bit of fat finger. So with the 124 set up, this is stock, so 122, so now I'm 124. Now, did I get close to this 3.3% that this change made? So, we are at now with our needle setting, 5.39 seconds. So, let's just calculate the percent increase of that. So, we do 6.02 minus 5.39. That gives us 0.63 change 
divide that by the original 6.02 and that gives us a 10 percent point four ten point four percent increase in the fuel that's going to run through this carburetor so that is way off compared to what we are over here so most likely what's going to happen is i'm going to rev up and it's going to be fine on the bottom end and then I'm going to top out and lose my RPMs. Now, do I want to have some more power, have a little more oomph, run a little rich on the bottom end, and have plenty of power, or do I want to try to balance this thing out? Well, I'm going to try to balance it out. So what i got to do is take my little shim and sand him down until I can get these numbers a little bit closer. I wouldn't mind being 3% higher on my jet and maybe like 6. I could be double probably isn't going to hurt a whole, whole lot because the jet's going to control it. But I definitely don't want to have that open so much that it'll fall once it gets up to the top up there. So let's take our little shim back out and we'll sand him down. And then uh, we'll go back and try this again. All right. So now we're at a 0.75. So we're down a little bit further. And little differences make big differences when it comes to needles. Just kind of like, it's kind of like the, uh, mix needle and that just little bitty amounts of turns make huge differences on these so that time we hit 580 <clears throat> so let's calculate that so we did 580 seconds and let's calculate that percentage difference so we'll go 6.02 minus 5.8 equals 0.22, divide that by the original, 6.02, and that gives us a 3.6% increase. Ah, so that matches pretty close there. So 3.3 to 3.6. I'm pretty close right there, and this was with a 0.75 millimeter. So it looks like somewhere between the 0.75 and the 0.8 is where we need to be. So that ends up on average a little bit less. That's looking like about one, one to three. This one was looking real high. So I think what I'm gonna do is shoot for about a 0.77, uh, seven, seven, somewhere right around in there. All right, so there we go. That's how we do our little trial setup kind of gives us an idea but we definitely don't need anything bigger than a 0.8 because that threw us way off we just got to play down in this range so now we kind of know we can put the bike back together with something between those two i'm going to hover more toward the bottom and see what it does if it still doesn't want to throttle up i may go up just a little bit in my shim but i'm definitely not going over 0.8 all right time to take the carbs off again and put our little washers in on our uh, diaphragm needles and then we'll be good to go all right so we got our big jets put on now we're at a 124 and then we got a, a 0.8 millimeter shim in our diaphragm needle and so now we should be balanced out pretty good i might have to adjust my air fuel mix just a little bit on my idle circuit and if this doesn't work, I can always go up another jet size and then rebalance back to the needle. Now that I know the percentages, we can calculate it and know how much to shim up on the needle. So let's fire it up and see if it's any better. So uh, we're going to run it like that for a while, get all this old crud burnt out of this uh, rebuild motor, and then we can always come back. I'll tune a little bit on the uh, air fuel on the idle circuit, just kind of balance that out a little bit. And uh, if worse comes to worse, I can always take it back off and go up a little bit bigger on the jet, but that sounds really close. Well, alrighty. Well, thanks for watching.